Hi everyone, in this video I will be showing you how to connect your MongoDB database by using Spring Boot. So let's get started. So first thing, just go to your browser and search for Spring Initializer. You will be getting the first link start.spring.io. Just select that and this is going to contain our entire Spring Boot project and we are going to configure the necessary dependencies and as well the Java version over here. So first thing project is going to be Gradle and Groovy. If you want Maven you can choose that but I am comfortable with Gradle. And next one is going to be language. I will choose Java and I will leave it with a default Spring Boot version. And here we need to change the name of our project. Okay, We will be having this project metadata. So I will just change the name as mongo spring and you can change the name whatever you want so i'll just copy this and i'll just change the group name also the artifact name so now we are done and next is going to be the packaging jar is fine for me and the java version is going to be 17 so just leave it the default well, the only thing that we changed over here is the name that's it we didn't touch anything other than that and next is going to be the dependencies so for this we will be using the spring web dependency okay because we are going to have some api calls okay so for that we will be using spring web this one and for connecting with mongodb database we need to use the mongodb driver so that's the dependency name so just search for mongo you'll be having this spring data mongodb not the reactive one just go with spring data mongodb and finally i would also like you to add lombok so in case if you are having a class, we will be having a getter, setter and we need to initialize with constructors. We can just avoid everything. So as it says, Java annotation library, which helps to reduce boilerplate code. So if you just use Lombok, it saves us a lot of time in reducing our boilerplate getter, setters and code. Just add this also. So these are the three dependencies and these are the settings that I have had for my Spring Boot project. So once you're done good with this, you need to just click on generate and it will get downloaded as a zip file. All right. So just go to your downloads folder. You'll be having the zip file of our entire Spring Boot project downloaded. Just right click and just extract files. OK, so I'm just extracting in my downloads folder itself. In case if you want to be in a better location, you can just cut this and paste it in any other folder that you want. That's totally up to you. So if I go inside this folder, we will be having our source and our Java files over here. So the prerequisites for running this project is going to be you must have MongoDB Compass installed and also you must have both Java and IntelliJ installed on your system. And in case if you don't have Java and IntelliJ installed, you can just click on the card that is appearing on top. I have done an entire tutorial on that. So now we are good to go. Just open IntelliJ IDEA. I hope you have this editor. So once you're done opening, you need to just click on the top. You need to go to open and you need to go to the location where you have your extracted file. Basically this project, okay? You need to go to the location where you have this thing. Here it is. And another important thing, you'll be having this Mongo Spring, all right? And inside that you'll be having another folder named as Mongo Spring. So I would recommend you to open the inner Mongo Spring folder, okay? Not the parent one. You'll be having the subfolder. So just select the subfolder and click on OK. Trust project, this window, yeah. So basically here you can see, right? This is the main parent folder. I'm not having any other Mongo Spring or subfolder. But here in this case, here you can see, right? We had a subfolder over here. So we have like two Mongo Spring over here, but just open the inner folder in your IntelliJ IDEA. I hope that made sense. So now we are inside our project and this is the folder structure. If I go inside source, main, Java, and this is our main Spring Boot application. And initially it will take some time for the Gradle to build and your project to load. So just be patient till then. And you need to also configure your Java. It will automatically ask you set up SDK over here. You need to just select that and you need to just select your Java JDK. It will automatically get configured over there in case if you are opening for the first time. So after this, you need to just go to this path, source, main, Java, 
and you need to go to mongo spring application this is the starting point of your spring boot application so now we are good we have successfully set up our spring boot application next thing is we need to begin coding so the first file that we are going to create is the model so whatever may be the spring boot application or project we will be requiring some files so one is going to be the model next one is going to be the repository next one is going to be the controller and the final one is going to be service so let me just you know create the folders at first so that it makes our code look clean so just go to this particular folder okay com dot your project name and you need to right click this you need to select new and you need to select package so here i'm going to type model at first all right just don't mess around with the existing text just type your model that's it and we'll be getting the model folder over here so first thing let me explain what is a model so in our mongodb compass data will be stored as key and value pairs so this is an example how our data will be stored inside our mongodb tag table so our model will basically have the key name that's it so in case if you are creating a model which is going to be just a java class it will have name mark and age as the data members or variables inside that so i hope this made sense let me just now create you a model so after this just right click this model just click on new we need to select java class and the name that we are going to give here is going to be the collection or table name inside our mongodb compass so i will just give the name here as student okay that's it and i'll just click on class just hit enter that's it we will be getting the student class and as i told you we will be having the key names as variables or data members for this particular student class so it's going to be private and the data type of role number is going to be integer it's going to be role number and next one is going to be name you can choose whatever you want i will just go with name is going to be of type string and next is going to be private string address something like this you can have these things next is we will be annotating this particular class so the first annotation that we are going to add is document and don't worry about this no usages thing this is just a indication where we are using our class so i thought this was the text at first so you can't remove this so first annotation is going to be document so just go to the above line where you have your class so it's going to be at just type d you will be getting document hit enter it will automatically come here above your class name so this is the indication that we give to spring boot that this is going to be our document or table name in our mongodb compass and as i told you next annotation is going to be data and this is from lombok and this reduces the use of having those getters setters constructors initializing the value all those things okay and up along with that we will be having this no args constructor and all logs constructor this is basically for initializing this value so this is it and the final annotation is going to be for our integer roll number so i'll just go here like to the top and it's going to be at capital i d all right this proves that our integer roll number is a primary key like this is going to be unique so that's it now we are good with the class and next is going to be the repository file so this repository file basically links our student class with our mongodb compass so only with the help of the object of the repository we will be able to insert or fetch values from our mongodb compass so i'll just explain you in a minute what is a repository so for that first create a new file so same thing just click on your project name and go to new package just have it as repository all right and this repository is going to be a interface and not a class so right click repository new java class and this is going to be of the name student repo you can name whatever you want and this is going to be an interface so here you can see we are having interface student repo and we will be extending the mongo repository which is a keyword indicating that this is a repository so it's going to be extends we'll be having this mongo repository and this mongo repository 
takes two parameters all right because we have just created a repository over here we haven't linked it with the class name so we're having this class how will this repository know that this repository corresponds to this class so we need to name this student over here right we need to pass it as an argument for this so it's going to be the first parameter over here, here is going to be the class name is going to be student basically the class name that we have created over here and the next parameter is going to be the data type of our primary key in this class so our primary key over here is integer so we need to have here integer so if your primary key let's suppose for example i'm having a um, name as a primary key which no one does you need to have the value as string because name is having a uh, of type string if this is a primary key you need to have here string i'm having here integer because my primary key over here is integer denoted by this annotation id so now we are good we are done with our repository final thing is our controller and this is a place where we specify our uri so basically this path if you know like if you are using this postman and stuff we will be having this path local host and slash we will be having our custom paths for so many operations like this and controller is the place where we will be creating and adding the functionality to these paths you can also do that with a service but in this video since i'm going to show a minimal demo i'll be just writing the entire logic within the controller folder itself so same thing just go to your project new it's going to be package i will name it as controller and inside the controller folder new java class it's going to be main controller that's it now we are done creating our controller class and this will also have an annotation denoting that this is a place where we'll be defining our uri and path so for that we need to have the rest controller annotation this is where we will be de defining our api paths so first thing let me just show you a simple function that helps us to post data inside our mongodb compass okay simple one this is going to be a function all right so it's going to be public void i'm not going to return anything from this function it's going to be add student and i'll just open the curly bracket so first annotation that we are going to use here is the post mapping all right post mapping so this basically means that we are posting data or inserting data in our mongodb compass so if i send some data from postman that will be received by this post mapping function and it will insert inside our mongodb compass so let me define the path so just open circular bracket slash add student so if i hit this path if i go to my uh, postman and have here add student and hit this basically this path will be triggered and this function and the code inside this will be getting executed i hope that made sense and now we need to find a way how we can send the data from postman and we need to cache the data and save it in our mongodb so for example just imagine this is my data all right so i'll just go to my postman and this is going to be my path this is going to be of type post and it's going to be body and it's going to be of type json i'm having this okay i will explain this clearly later okay i'm just doing this as a demo purpose so imagine i'm having this data at the moment and i'm just sending clicking on send so this is going to be add student okay so just imagine this i'm clicking on send so this data needs to get stored in our mongodb compass so we need to have a way so that we can cache this data so imagine this data this data will be similar to this one okay student thing so we will be having here name roll number and address so just have this as copy this and this is going to be like address and this is going to be roll number all right so just imagine this way we will be having the exact same parameters that we are sending over here and that will match with our class so we need to find a way how we can catch this data okay this data by this function all right so for that we will be using the request body annotation so it's going to be at request body and we need to specify the model name so this is where the model name comes in handy we will be having the student right so it's going to be 
of type student and we need to create a variable of that class student so the reason why we are using here student is because the student has three variables and the data that we are sending also has three JSON so that's why we are basically mapping this JSON to this particular class student and we are doing that with the help of this request body annotation so this student variable or object will have this data if you hit on send now if you are say hitting this particular path all right so now we have got the data the final thing that we need to do is we need to save this particular data so for that we will be using the repository so remember what i told you about repository repository is used to store or insert or fetch data from our mongodb compass so we will be using this particular variable present inside repository so it's going to be student repo we'll be creating an object of that it's going to be student repo and we need to also add the auto wired annotation for this because like we are using this student repo class and we're creating an object in some other file so for that we need to have this auto wired so that you know it acts as a dependency injection so i'll just have this auto wired thing so this is fine now and final thing we'll be using that student repo variable inside our function so it's going to be something like the student repo dot we will be having the save thing and inside the save we will be passing our variable name student so i'll just put student over here so this is now fine and final thing the most important thing is we didn't add any configuration all right so we need to like link our project with our database so for that first go to your mongodb compass okay and don't make any changes in your connection just have it like this because if you make any other changes over here you need to also replicate those changes in our spring boot also Ju just have this the same way don't touch here in case if you are like working in a production code maybe you can just change this everything but we are just doing it locally so just have this don't change this uri or something just copy this and have it in your notepad we may use this later and just click on connect yeah so now i'm connected with my mongodb compass locally so after this you need to just go to the folder called resources we'll be having main under that we'll be having another folder called as resources just click that and we'll be having this application dot properties file just select that so this will be empty at first and here we will be specifying the port number and the path of our mongodb compass so it's going to be server dot port let me give it as 8081 and next one is going to be spring dot data dot mongodb dot uri equal to and here we need to specify the path that we copied you need to just copy this and be careful with the spelling okay you need to be super careful there you need to just place this and here you need to specify the database name so you can specify existing database name or if you just give here a new database name it will get automatically added over here so for example let me go with mongo spring like this so this database is not currently available in my compass so it will get automatically created as i run the program so i think we are good now we are done with most of the part yeah this is fine everything is fine so for running this what you need to do is you need to go to java same your mongo spring application that is the main application file and you'll be having this run icon automatically so you need to just click on this run and you need to just click run application main and we'll be having this application and if you want to edit the configuration you can do some changes over here this is totally up to you by default it will get automatically filled up once you configure your java all right so you don't need to like worry about these things it will automatically run so if i just now scroll so here you can see tomcat started on port 8081 the reason why it is starting on 8081 is because here we have specified in our application dot properties as 8081 so let me just now clear this so now we are good we didn't just now insert some data so let's see how we can do that i will just go to my main controller all right so this is our path and if you hit this path and send the student data it will get automatically saved for us and the data will be coming in our mongodb database so for this let me go to postman and just click on plus i'll be getting the new workspace and the operation that we are going to perform is post mapping 
okay so you need to change the operation here to post and you need to have this path all right http colon double slash localhost colon your port number that you have specified in application dot properties so i'm having here perfectly as 8081 this is good till this it's fine it's not http yes and this port number is going to be this port number that you have specified over here and after this you have to make sure that you are changing the operation because here we are performing post and you need to copy the path and you need to just paste it after this slash all right and the next important thing is we need to send some data so we are actually getting a model student and this model student contains role number name and address so we need to send a json with these three keys and for that let me go to body and inside body will be having none select raw and change the text to json so you need to be super careful even if you mess around with any one of these even you have this as text or javascript you won't be getting the output make sure that you change that to json and open curly bracket and you need to specify the key name so let me just copy this basically i'll just copy this and paste it and i'll just remove this private integer thing yeah i'll just remove these things so this is how it should look you need to have your key names inside double quotes and you, you need to also have the value inside double quotes if it is of type string so in our case roll number we give the roll number type as integer so since it is of type integer i'm not giving any double quotes for roll number but name and address is of type string so i'm specifying that within double quotes and that's it now we are good and just look at the database names we are not having our mongo spring database all right so once i hit this send we will be having our mongo spring database and inside that we will be having a table or collection name student okay we will be having those things so i will just click on send all right so this is done we are getting 200 okay and we are also getting some logs completed we are not having any errors and if i go to my compass and if i just now refresh here you can see i'm having mongo spring and if i open this i'm having a collection named student so uh, as i clearly told you this class name is going to be your collection name and if i just go inside this here you can see i'm having the id name and address that we sent over here and this is like auto generated value you don't need to worry about this and the final thing that i want to show you is in case if you want to connect to an existing database so what if i want my student collection to be created inside this new db which is an existing database so in that case you can just go to your application dot properties and remove this mongo spring and you need to just give here new db which is my existing database and you need to just rerun it okay and that's a super important thing if you are going to do any changes you need to click on this stop and rerun okay so that the application get restarted and your changes are also getting affected so this is good yeah application restarted so i'll just clear all i'll go to this and i'll just change the number to something like this and yeah let this be fine i'll just click on send 200 and this time if i refresh this here you can see i'm having student inside my new db and here you can see i'm also having the latest data that i sent one two five four five the same id so this is basically how you connect your mongodb database with spring boot so i hope you would have found this video useful do check the playlist of my channel i've done a lot of programming videos in spring boot mongodb node.js react.js mysql and other programming videos and ai related videos check them out subscribe me thanks for watching